Hey guys, this is Peter again with Keras.net in our sixth and final video in our keyboard review series for the Android operating system. What you see in front of you is a Samsung Captivate from AT&T. Um, the sixth keyboard that we're going to review is called TouchPal Chinese Input. It does both English and a couple variations of Chinese um, for your typing pleasure. So let's get into the settings first. As always, we're going to get into the settings first. Then we're going to go into messaging, and we're going to attempt to type out the Guinness World Record setting text paragraph. Uh, if you guys have seen this before, it was just supposedly broken again by swipe in 24 seconds by a woman from Britain um, on a Galaxy S. Again, we've typed this in three times already with TouchPal to give you guys a general sense of what it's like when a keyboard learns based on what you've typed in the past, uh, your own style, et cetera, et cetera. And at the bottom there's a paragraph that I'm going to type that we've never typed in before to kind of give you a sense of what it's like typing on a day-to-day -day basis. For the sake of time and just if you've watched the other five videos, you know what the paragraph is and kind of how keyboards are spawned. We're only going to do about half of each so you can kind of see what the different options are and so we can focus more on what you can get done with the keyboard rather than you just watching me type out paragraph after paragraph. So again, TouchPal input through carries.net and let's go into settings. So first, I did a shortcut with um, add-on or something like that, an app that lets you do that. So let's go into TouchPal. So at the top, again, pretty general stuff. I'm going to turn off key, prow, key press sound and key press vibration so you guys aren't annoyed throughout the whole video. Um, you can enable button pop-up effect. You can change the keyboard layout, your touch palette input, your language. Um, so with language, you're going to want to make sure that English and just a Chinese language is inputted. And there's kind of a cool feature of this that I'll show you later, but this, again, these are the features that I have installed right now, um, the top one and then English. So let's go back. Uh, touch palette input, you can set uh, your options here. So I'm going to click all these. Actually, I'm going to unclick spell check, and I'll tell you why I'm going to do that later. But again, pretty standard stuff. Um, one thing that's new is something called relevant words that we'll get into later that I'll kind of show you, but it's kind of nice uh, format uh, to, sh to give you kind of variations on a word, past, present, uh, plural, that kind of stuff. So we'll go into that a little bit later. Again, going down on the bottom, you can import your contact names to the dictionary. You can update the dictionary with hot words, apparently, from their database. I would assume that's new trend words or slang words um, at the bottom. You can share the app with your friends, get help, tutorial, software, and about. So uh, let's jump into the app now that we have, oh, and then keyboard layout kind of gives you a couple different um, options. The slide down and the swipe to switch is what I'm going to show you in a second. So. Let's go back to our main keyboard settings, go back to home, jump into messaging. First, we're going to long and hold on the type to compose. We're going to change our input method to the bottom, touch pal Chinese. That should pop up, and this is what you're going to see the first time. It'll run you through a little walkthrough first, but I've already done that to get out of the way. So, again, with touch pal. What's kind of cool about this is you don't hold down keys to get to a capital letter or to get to a number. What you're going to do, and I'll kind of minimize this so you can see. Oh, no, nope, that locked it in. So with T, you can either type T, you can put your finger on T, swipe down to do a 5, or you can put your finger on T and swipe up to do a capital. So that's a feature that is unique to TouchPal. It's a really cool kind of feature. Um, the the similar words, or I forget what the exact name of it is, but the one that shows you plurals and other uh, variations of the word is over here. So as you can see underneath the rag, there's a small arrow. So we're going to click rag and scroll down. And as you can see, you can see ragged, raging, rags, or sorry, raged, raging, rags. Um, and then you can just click the back button to go back. Um, so let's kind of escape back on that. You hold down the smiley face to get to your numbers, emoticons, and others. So you can go to your numbers, as you can see. You can kind of scroll down in that. You go to your emoticons. You can go to your other symbols. It uh, kind of gives you your website, stuff that you can do. You can lock this in. You can backspace here. You can go back. All pretty 
uh, cool features on this. It is kind of annoying that you have to scroll up and down for these. It would be nice if it covered the whole screen, but then again, if it covered the whole screen, you wouldn't see the whole message that you're typing. So understandably why they made it this way. It would be nice, though, if you could swipe to a different screen here. Um, at the bottom left, as you'll see, it says English, and then it has a little dictionary symbol. We'll get that into that in a second, but for right now, let's swipe to the left. As you can see, it changes it again to that uh, Blackberry, Blackberry style keyboard. Um, swiping to the left again gets you to your T9 or your regular uh, number keypad that you'd find on a older um, hardware button phone. This one has loop around, so if you swipe to the left again, you get back to your main screen. So think of the three keyboards in a circle, um, which is unlike what it's like in better keyboard. So uh, at the top, you can search. So again, you can uh, add these add-ons, the TouchPal phone search and the smart dialer, um, but we're not going to focus on those for now. Settings takes you back to the screen that I showed you earlier. And the little arrow right there drops the keyboard down. Edit, of course, edits a word. So let's start typing something out. So we're going to start typing the Guinness Book of World Records sentence. So we'll start with the razor toothed. Again, you can see when I type in the, and then, oh, sorry, I didn't do a space. The razor. One thing about TouchPal that it does not do is it does not recognize words that are hyphenated, so I cannot add razor tooth with a hyphen to the dictionary. I can add razor tooth to one word, but not razor tooth. So again, you can kind of see in the action the swiping feature. So we're going to go to V and swipe down. Oh, sorry, that's an underscore. We're going to go to K and swipe down. And then we're going to go to our tooth. Again, I did that from before, so it's already in there. Um, so keep going of when you do your space, it inserts the space like all the other ones. And this kind of has a feature like SwiftKey. So as you can see on the left, it suggests the after the. Oh, and it does not suggest generic. So it, it did do this before. Maybe it uh, reset or something. Oh, genera. Click that on the left, and again, we're going to go into the Sarah Salmus. So again, you'd have to start out with, like in the other keyboard demos that you've seen, pushing a shift if you want to get Sarah Salmus in a capitalized Sarah. There you go. You can click Enter, Sarah Salmus, and... Pygocentris, as you can see on the right part. Sorry, I'll kind of keep. I'll try and keep the, the phone in the middle of the view as much as possible. Um, so there you have it. So that's based on words you've typed in the past, kind of how it memorizes it. In the past, er, a second ago, it did show a couple words in a row when I was typing. Let me see if I can get that to do it again right now. R. And then again, the most. As you can see, I'm just doing this off of what I did before. So the most, and then if you type, start typing in for, oh, didn't do my space, ferocious. Freshwater, again, it's doing this all based on what I did before in the world. Um, so that is the memory feature of it. Let's go into our new paragraph, select all. So I'm going to just type out the first sentence so you can kind of see what it's like. Uh, again, the first, the first two sentences, hi, how are you today? I'm going to the grocery store later today. So I'll show you kind of punctuation, stuff like that. So we're going to go into hi. We're going to do our comma. It's going to enter the space. So this does support the space and punctuation function if you push those keys when a word is highlighted. So hi. Again, it's giving me recommendations on the top. And when, oh, sorry. Um, when I swipe down, again, it puts in the question mark and it gives me a space.
as you can see, more auto. Oh, sorry. Again, if you uh, do the auto, it's not going to put in a space. So if it gives you a couple words in a row, but then it doesn't give you the word after, you do have to do the space yourself. And finally, we'll end with a period. So that is typing, how you're going to see it just generally off the top. Um, so getting into the cool feature of the integration of English and Chinese, if you click that English, which it's, it's not going to start out on English, it's going to start out with that symbol and you click the Chinese caricature, which I'm assuming means English to get to the English setting. But so when you start typing in English, so I'm going to type the word house, you'll see what I mean, how it's a cool function. So if I type in the word house, Again, I don't speak Chinese, but I'm assuming that caricature on the left is house. It also gives you the English house in the center, as you can see. Um, so this is kind of a cool feature if you're learning Chinese or if your you know, son or daughter are learning Chinese and they just got a cell phone that can support this feature. It's a nice way to integrate English to Chinese. Um, it does not do the other way around that I found, um, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments or if the touchpad developers are reading this, please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But again, a really cool feature that you can have with touchpad Chinese input. Um, it does support, oh, sorry about that. It does support the long press and hold for edit text. That's about all we have for the touchpad demonstration. Again, this is Peter with Carius.net doing one of, this is number six of six in our keyboard. Uh, reviews of Android keyboards. Uh, go to our Carries.net article to see our recommendations, our notes to the developers, what we'd like to see in the next releases, and the QR codes for you to download these applications right away. Um, as a side note, in case you haven't watched the other articles, we are doing a swipe beta invitation giveaway partnered with gizmodo.com, gsmarena.com, and Swipe Incorporated. We have 50 to give out on our site. GSM Arena and Gizmodo have invites to give out on their site as well. Um, we are going to hold, be holding a 24-hour window where if you register and comment on our article, you are entered in to win one of 50 random swipe giveaways. Again, if this goes well, we're going to be in talks with swipe to hopefully either have weekly rollouts or further contests where we can give away more swipe beta invitations. Again, that's carious.net. You can check out the rest of our videos on our YouTube channel, Net. And again, this is Peter bringing you video six of six in our keyboard review. Have a great day and look forward to more articles from carries.net of this nature. Thanks.